Hello, this is Peter Wielander, Process Industries Editor for Control Engineering. Welcome to the second of our basement videos. You can see we've moved upstairs today because we need something with a little more ceiling height in the basement because we're going to talk about measuring the level of liquid in tanks. Now, if you can hear me over my neighbor's leaf blower, it is uh, November after all, we're going to look at this and we have as our main object of the lesson today a six foot tall tank. Well, it's, it's, it's a tank that's actually a piece of six inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe. But we've outfitted it with a cap at the bottom and a nice section of clear tubing that will function as a sight glass so you'll be able to see how much water is in it. There's nothing in there right now, but we're going to be filling it in just a second. The concept is really very simple. Liquids have weight, and we can measure that weight in the form of pressure. If we insert a pressure gauge near the bottom of the tank, the weight of the liquid above the gauge will register according to its depth. The more liquid above the gauge, the higher the pressure reading. If we know the density of the liquid, the pressure reading can be converted to depth. For our demonstration, we have tapped a hole near the bottom of the tank and connected a tube, or impulse line, to a Rosemount 3051 pressure sensor. The device is configured to measure pressure in inches of water column, but any unit of pressure could be converted to the desired depth reading. Okay, now let's put some water in here. And you watch and see what's coming through on the, uh, on the pressure sensor. Well, you can see the water coming through on the sight glass. Okay, I think that's enough for the moment. Now that we've got the water in the tank, let's see how close we really are to the actual measurement. If I lift the ruler a little bit off the bottom to compensate for the thickness of the bottom of the cap, I would say that the reading according to the sight class is just about 44 inches. As you can see right now, the pressure sensor actual element is down here, roughly equal with the bottom of the tank. But let's lift it up and set it up here. Pressure reading changes by about 14 inches. Now all this works very nicely if the tank is vented and it's open to the atmosphere and there's nothing else that's going to interfere with the uh, actual static pressure of the weight of the water. But all tanks are not open. So what happens if this tank is sealed? Let's put a cap on top of the tank as it would be if it were sealed. And let's see if that makes any difference. Okay, now what I've done is I've connected, I've put the cap on the tank, and I've connected a line to a compressed air tank. Now, bear in mind that a PVC is not suitable for using compressed air. There are, it's just not the right material for that, and neither is uh, clear polyethylene tubing. So we're just going to gas this up just a little bit, just enough to confuse the pressure sensor. Now, watch, watch what the gauge reads even though there's nothing happening to the level of the liquid, it's just the pressure inside the tank. We'll just bump it a little bit and see what the pressure gauge says. Now see, with just that little bit of air, the pressure reading changed pretty dramatically. Now it's leaking out. But you can see that had an obvious effect on the reading. If you were using that for the reading, you might say, well, how come, the, uh, how come the level changed that abruptly, when in fact it didn't change at all? There is a way to solve that. If you are going to pressurize the tank, and you do still need to use this as your means of measuring level, there is a way around it. Just in the same way that we have the sight glass attached to both ends of the tank, we can attach both ends of the pressure sensor. This pressure sensor, the 3051, happens to be a differential pressure gauge. 
At the moment, we just have the, the low side open to atmosphere. But if we connect the low side to the top of the tank and read the pressure of the headspace above it, it will compensate. So now let's pressurize the tank again and see what we see on the differential now on the differential pressure reading. Now that we're taking a differential pressure reading, where we're reading the weight of the liquid compensated by any pressure inside the tank, we can still get a true reading just as we did when the tank was vented. This is a very simple but very useful method for measuring tank level. It only works with liquids. You probably want to stay away from things where there's going to be sediment because the sediment might have a tendency to clog the impulse line or you just have to put the impulse line somewhere above the sediment level and compensate for it. If you're measuring something other than water, if you're measuring something heavier or lighter in density, you can compensate for that as well. You could do it using a mechanical gauge if you wanted, even a mechanical differential pressure gauge if necessary. But if you're going to feed information to a larger control system or you want to outfit alarms and that sort of thing, an electronic device is going to help you a great deal because you can send the information remotely, you can trigger alarms for high or low level, any number of things that you can do using this approach. Thanks to the folks from Rosemont for giving us the uh, 3051 pressure sensor. For Control Engineering, this is Peter Wielander. Thanks for watching.